what was the company looking to accomplish with this next generation of skid steers and compact track loaders uh, um, in terms of evolutionary design? So we find ourselves in an industry that is constantly evolving and changing. Um, and with an industry like that, we're always trying to keep up or stay ahead of where the industry is going and try to maintain that leadership position that Caterpillar has in various aspects of you know compact track loader and skid loader uh, machine design uh, and technology. Um, so one of the big impetuses for us was we wanted to develop a machine that was a no excuses machine is how we call it. Um, that it performed as we expected it to in the dirt all the time, no questions asked. And we, so we wanted to kind of take that step forward in being a performance leader while maintaining or enhancing our leadership position and overall cab comfort and overall technology and, and just the creature comforts that we bring uh, on a day-to-day -day basis with not just this generation of CTLs and SSLs, but even what we've done in the past. Okay, and what about that power and performance? What have you built into these models that is different from the previous generation that really lends itself to delivering them extra power that it may not have had before? So one of the benefits of the way we approached this new product introduction was we started with a clean sheet, a blank piece of paper, and we said, instead of us trying to fit a machine around a power plant, in this case an engine, or trying to fit an engine around a machine power plant, what if we develop both for each other? And that's really where we were able to not set any limits around what it is that we would have to compromise on. Um, we were able to find the right engine solution that provided the right power and the performance. But we were able to also take full advantage of it from a machine design perspective and from a hydraulics architecture perspective to be able to fully realize that. So it's a balance of what the engine could deliver, what the machine design can handle, and what the hydraulics can take advantage of. So it's really a fully matched integrated solution and starting with the clean sheet is what allowed us to do that. Excellent. So can you give us some details of that engine? What engine platform are you using in these models? Sure. So the 275, 275XCs, and the 285 and the 285XCs, which are new, they will share what we call our C3.6 liter engine platform. It's a turbo after-cooled uh, engine platform. Uh, again, purposefully designed to meet the requirements and the, the targets that uh, that those machines are looking to meet. Um, so we've got two different horsepower ratings in those. Uh, on the XCs, we've got a new higher powered uh, variant of that engine, which goes up to 134 uh, horsepower or 100 kilowatts on that platform. But beyond just the power, uh, what we also have been able to deliver with this uh, engine that we've developed is a much more aggressive, what we call a torque curve on the engine. And what that means is um, when you think about an engine and its power, it is a factor of the torque that it can put out and at what engine speed it does that. And what we were able to find is a an engine design that delivered us a torque curve that allowed us to put that full capability of the engine power, be it 134 horsepower or or 82 kilowatts or what have you, to the track over a wider range of that engine uh, speeds. So that's really the big difference in why we feel like that torque is so important is when you are fully utilizing the engine and what its capabilities are, as the engine slows down, it is still able to put out that same power to the track and we're able to take advantage of it from a undercarriage design, from a machine design, from what the hydraulics can do with that additional power because the hydraulics are constantly demanding that power because they're sensing it. So that's how we're able to take full advantage of what the engine's being able to provide us. So that extra power, when we talk about it, it's not just the raw power, which the XC platforms do have, it, but it's also how wide of a range is that power available. Since you mentioned hydraulics, mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the hydraulic system. That has evolved as well. 
It has, yes. Um, so we have more advanced hydraulic architecture on these machines. So what the architecture we have is what we call a closed centered hydraulic system. So it's a different type of valve than what we've had in the past. Uh, it allows us to offer things like software enabled high flow, uh, for example, so you could upgrade the machine without having to get new hardware. Uh, but the other benefit of that hydraulic architecture is it has a lot of load sensing uh, capabilities built into it. So when you are going into a pile and you're demanding more hydraulic power, that hydraulic system is able to provide that feedback to the valve, to the engine, and it is able to deliver that power when it's needed. The other benefit of the hydraulic architecture that we have is also because of the, the, the system design, we're able to be more fine with our tuning of the hydraulics. So if you're doing fine grading and you're making those very minute adjustments, the system responds immediately. There's no lag. So that's, again, matching the hydraulic architecture to be able to take full advantage of what the capability of the engine and the machine design is. So. What would you say are some of the other big changes in technology that are built into these models? So I think the big one I want to talk about is the E-bar indicators. Um, I think that's something that's very different, um, at least on a compact track loader. Um, and it is, obviously, the E-bar e system is, you will see those in, say, a dozer or even a track type loader. And what we have done is we've adapted that design to our compact track loader. Um, and one of the main reasons why we chose that was these larger uh, platform track loaders, uh, we want them to be biased towards performance, but we don't want to take a step back on the comfort, right? Um, so comfort also comes from being, getting a sense that the machine is stable, that when you are working with a heavy load, which these machines can lift and they can lift much higher, you want to have the sense of the machine stable that is planted and that it can do what you're asking it to do, but also not give up on the, what I would call the, the, the right comfort part of it or the E-bar design that we have of these machines allows us to be able to prioritize performance, but not give up on the comfort because we feel like the customers in this size class that are, they want that performance. That's their priority. And that's how we've designed our undercare system is to match what the customers want. Looking at all of these design changes that have occurred, how does this all combine and work together to de deliver more performance to the end user? So from our perspective, what we like to look at it is we want the machines to be simple to use. So there is a significant shortage of skilled labor out in the industry right now. And we don't want to have somebody who's starting on you know on job side or using these machines to have to learn a whole lot of techniques of how to use these machines so everything with the creature comforts that we have in the cab the way our controls are intuitively laid out the buttons on the joystick everything is designed for the machine to just do what you expect it to do right and all the technology all the engine performance all the the increased capability with the hydraulics, those all just work in the background, just enabling a customer or an operator, whether they're skilled or they're brand new, starting off to just, just use the machine as they're supposed to and just get the full benefit out of the machine. When will these new models be available and where are they being manufactured? So they will be manufactured in uh, Sanford, North Carolina, and uh, availability should be obviously coming out in 2025.